Star Wars has been around for decades, so it's a sad but inevitable reality that many of the actors who have appeared in that galaxy far, far away are no longer with us. Here are a few faces from the franchise you may not have realized passed away. Admiral Ackbar had a pretty small role in the original Star Wars trilogy. In fact, he only appeared briefly in Return of the Jedi. Even still, the character's appearance made him a firm fan favorite, as did the iconic line that has now passed into pop culture legend. It's a trap! Whoa, Admiral Ackbar! Naturally then, fans of Star Wars mourned the unfortunate passing of Akbar's voice actor Eric Bowersfeld, who died in 2016 at the age of 93. Interestingly, Bowersfeld once argued that he thought of his movie roles as a secondary career that he had accidentally stumbled into, as opposed to his more solid work as a radio producer. He once wrote, The voice work I did in movies was accidental. I was working with Randy Tom on radio dramas at his technical quarters at Lucasfilm. One day, Ben Burt, sound designer for Star Wars, came by and asked if I would audition for a voice in the movie. Bowersfeld also voiced Bib Fortuna, one of Jabba the Hutt's associates, and he returned to the role of Admiral Akbar in The Force Awakens, which released just months before he passed away. As he dies in the opening hour of the film, Uncle Owen can be considered a pretty minor Star Wars character in the grand scheme of things, but his death is the primary call to arms that sets Luke Skywalker off on his hero's journey. So, in a weird way, Owen is actually one of the movie's most important characters, making actor Phil Brown one of the story's pivotal players. Sadly, Brown passed away in 2006 at the age of 89. Even though he was well-known when Star Wars was made, he'd faced plenty of hardships as an actor. In the 1950s, Brown was caught up in Senator Joseph McCarthy's communist trials and was actually blacklisted because he refused to comply with the House Un-American Activities Committee's demand to name communists in Hollywood. He denied being a communist himself, but was still forced to move to London to continue acting. As it happened, George Lucas was filming in London at the same time and needed a local actor with an American accent, so he brought Brown on board. Not long after, Brown was with Lucas in Tunisia, filming A New Hope's early scenes on Tatooine. A powerhouse English actress, Sheila Frazier, died in 2000 at the age of 79. She had played a small but memorable role in A New Hope as Luke's Aunt Beru. The character dies early on in the story, so Frazier was unable to contribute a lot to the film, but just like Lars, Beru's death spars Luke into action, driving his character arc through much of the trilogy. And even though her role in Star Wars is small, some would argue that she's indirectly responsible for Luke becoming the hero he is. At a New York Comic Con panel, author Meg Cabot argued that very case, suggesting that Aunt Beru's kindness and caring for Luke helped him overcome the dark side and defeat the Empire. It also helped him find the compassion to look for the good left in Darth Vader, without whom he never would have stopped Emperor Palpatine. So yeah, nice work, Aunt Beru. Drew Henley appeared in the Star Wars franchise as Red Leader, the pilot who led Luke's squadron in the strike against the Death Star at the climax of A New Hope. Sadly, he was accidentally credited as Drew Hemley at the end of the film, but hey, he at least managed to squeeze in a post-mortem appearance in Rogue One thanks to the power of archive footage. In the first film, Red Leader actually nearly destroys the Death Star. He launches his torpedoes at the exhaust port, but his aim is slightly off. Not long after his miss, his ship is destroyed and the poor guy is subsequently killed. Henley was a well-respected actor when he was cast in A New Hope, but was forced to retire not long after the film was released due to his struggles with bipolar disorder. After working through his mental illness, he settled down to run a bed and breakfast with his wife. Henley died in 2016 at the age of 75. Anakin Skywalker has been played by multiple actors across the Star Wars franchise, but when his deformed, weary face is revealed in Star Wars Return of the Jedi, that's classically trained actor Sebastian Shaw playing the role. He also portrayed Anakin's Force Ghost at the end of the original version of Return of the Jedi, before being replaced by Hayden Christensen in subsequent releases. Shaw was mostly known as a stage actor outside of Star Wars fandom. He was a member of the Royal Shakespeare Company, where he'd often play lead or featured roles. He was also a Broadway veteran and was well known for taking on parts in daring and controversial plays. Lucas choosing to digitally replace Shaw with Christensen in Return of the Jedi sparked some controversy at the time, but Star Wars fans will still never forget the reveal of Darth Vader's face. Shaw passed away in 1994 at the age of 89. Jason Wingreen didn't actually appear in the Star Wars films in person, but his voice brought one of the saga's most iconic villains to life. Wingreen was the original voice of Boba Fett, the intergalactic bounty hunter who tracks down Han Solo during The Empire Strikes Back. Wingreen was also a well-known television actor when he auditioned for Star Wars, having appeared in a number of different shows throughout the 60s, 70s, and 80s. He originally auditioned for the role of Yoda, but lost out on the role and was cast as Boba Fett instead, and only recorded four lines for the final film. 
He's not even credited, and it wasn't until the year 2000 that the public discovered who had voiced the villain. Still, it's a testament to Wayne Green's talent that Boba Fett became such a massively popular character nonetheless. Wayne Green passed away in 2016 at the age of 95. You may never have seen Kenny Baker's face or heard his voice in a Star Wars film, but it's a fair bet you still know who he is. For most of the movies in the franchise, he portrayed one of sci-fi's most iconic characters, R2-D2. R2-D2 wasn't a puppet or an animatronic like so many other creatures in the Star Wars universe. Instead, there was an actor inside that droid. Baker was only 3 foot 8 inches, so he could fit inside the chassis used for filming, and he's the one responsible for crafting much of R2-D2's personality. When Baker passed away in 2016 at the age of 81, StarWars.com wrote, Whether it was the slow turn of R2's dome to convey suspicion or nervous wobbles signifying fear, Baker made a robotic being seem very human. While Baker played the droid in all three original films and two prequels, he also played an Ewok in Return of the Jedi. Peter Cushing was a massive star when he was cast as Grand Moff Tarkin in A New Hope. He also brought an immediate gravitas to the film, oozing menace and calm and somehow coming off every bit as intimidating as Darth Vader himself. Charming to the last. Before appearing in A New Hope, Cushing was an icon in horror cinema. He appeared in many of the Dracula and Frankenstein films of the 50s and 60s, and also portrayed Sherlock Holmes in a few movie adaptations. After a long and illustrious career, Cushing passed away in 1994 at the age of 81. Despite this, however, he technically reprised his role as Tarkin in Rogue One, A Star Wars Story, even though the film came out over 20 years after his death. Cushing was recreated in the film with state-of-the-art CGI, nearly climbing out of the uncanny valley in the process. Nearly. Even though Obi-Wan Kenobi died in A New Hope, Alec Guinness appeared in the other films of the original trilogy, thanks to the power of the Force. His casting lent some credibility to the original film, but he also infamously viewed the story as, in his words, fairy tale rubbish. Guinness was a hugely famous actor when he signed on for George Lucas's space opera. He had won an Oscar for The Bridge on the River Kwai and had starred in classics such as Lawrence of Arabia and Dr. Zhivago. And while many of the leading actors in Star Wars are big names now, they weren't at the time, making Guinness by far the biggest star in the movie in 1977. But why did he join the project if he hated the material? Well, there are a couple of reasons. First, he thought the moral of the story was admirable enough. Second, he wouldn't have to do any publicity for the film. And third, the studio offered him a massive salary. Of course, he ignored any fan mail he received about Star Wars and hated discussing his role as Obi-Wan. Sir Alec Guinness passed away in the year 2000 at the age of 86. One of the most prolific actors in the Star Wars franchise, Christopher Lee's career spans over 250 roles over the length of his career. Lee is absolutely one of the gods of geekdom and has graced several of Hollywood's most notable franchises. Here, he portrayed Count Dooku in two of the prequel films, Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. Lee became a star due to his many appearances in the Hammer Horror Dracula franchise, where, funnily enough, he frequently collaborated with another Star Wars alum, Peter Cushing. Lee's imposing figure and commanding voice made him perfectly suited to play the villain, which helped him a great deal in arguably his biggest ever film role, playing Saruman in The Lord of the Rings. A man of many talents, Christopher Lee also released a number of heavy metal albums when he was in his 80s and 90s. He was also knighted, served in the Second World War as a member of the RAF, and was attached to the British Army's Long Range Desert Group, the precursor of the modern-day SAS. He passed away in 2015 at the age of 93. Despite never having shown his face on screen in Star Wars, Peter Mayhew quickly became one of the saga's most iconic characters. His performance as Chewbacca helped bring a sense of real humanity to a character where many other actors could have easily been lost beneath the mask. <laughs> Laugh it up, fuzzball. Mayhew was a hospital orderly when he auditioned for Chewbacca, and even kept that job until after Return of the Jedi was released. The 7-foot, 3-inch actor then essentially made his living off the role for the rest of his life, attending conventions as a fan-favorite star for decades. He eventually reprised the role in 2015's The Force Awakens. Nearly everyone who worked with Mayhew on the Star Wars franchise had nothing but kind things to say about him. After his death in April 2019, Mark Hamill wrote on Twitter, He was the gentlest of giants a big man with an even bigger heart who never failed to make me smile, and a loyal friend who I loved dearly. I'm grateful for the memories we shared, and I'm a better man for just having known him." Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon! Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one!